Welcome to Token Post Daily News Briefing, where we provide you with the latest and most exclusive news on blockchain and cryptocurrency. Our top stories today include the Yellow Vest Movement, 9-11 Document on Sale for Bitcoin, and the European Commission. Stay tuned for more, I'm Eros Hun, and this is your Daily News Briefing. On January 7th, the French grassroots movement called Yellow Vests announced it was planning a bank run, one similar to that of Bitcoin's Proof of Keys movement. Identified as the so-called collector's referendum, the movement calls on supporters of the movement to withdraw all of their deposited cash from financial institutions this coming Saturday. One activist named Taz San spoke on a video posted via his social media account stating that the movement would be conducting a bank run in order to scare the governments into action. A strategy, he said, would be more legal and effective than resorting to violence. Interestingly, the movement also inspired the birth of cryptocurrencies, notably Gillette GenCoin, which seeks to reassert people's economic, territorial, and monetary sovereignty. While no one has officially drawn parallels to Proof of Keys movement, the similarities are clear to see. A report posted on Medium by Slomis, a blockchain-dedicated security firm, confirms that the recent 51% attack on the Ethereum Classics blockchain was malicious in its intent. Today, the company uploaded a report of the attack saying that a total of seven transactions were detected as rollbacks on the ETC blockchain, where attackers successfully traded 54,200 ETC across four transactions. Slomis tracked the attacker's account all the way back to its origin, revealing that the first attack took place on January 6th. One attacker moved a large amount of ETC from Binance's exchange wallet to another account, and 4,000 ETC was subsequently transferred to the attacker's Bitru wallet. Following the first attack, the same attacker used similar methods to make another attack, this time for 9,000 ETC. The report confirmed that the double spend they found through their research was consistent with the information posted on the blog of Coinbase. The public awaits further comment from the ETC community as there have been no official releases. Last week, so-called Dark Lord Hacker Group caught the attention of the public when they released one of three batches of documents about 9-11 secrets in exchange for the equivalent of 12,000 US dollars in Bitcoin. And just hours ago, the same group released a second batch containing 7,600 files related to the 9-11 incident. So far, the release documents contain no major evidence to cover up conspiracies revolving around 9-11. The files merely disclose insurance documents related to the damage claims. While the exact amount of Bitcoin received for the second batch of documents was not revealed, the hacker group has so far stayed true its slogan, Cyber Cash for Cyber Cash. The Venezuelan government has entered into dispute with the United States on Petro, the Venezuelan government-issued cryptocurrency. Venezuela filed a complaint against the United States to the World Trade Organization, claiming that the United States is infringing upon the country's rights under the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Venezuela stated that sanctions imposed by the United States on its product, as well as its digital currency, are discriminatory coercive trade restrictive measures. Regarding Petro, the complaint stated that, as digital currencies originating in the United States, are not subject to the same prohibitions as Venezuela digital currencies, the less favorable treatment to Venezuelan financial services is in violation of the GATS. According to Reuters, the United States has been given 60 days to respond. Should the country fail to do so, the WTO will decide in favor of Venezuela. The European Banking Authority, or EBA, has requested the European Commission to come up with new regulations for cryptocurrencies. The EBA defines crypto assets as a type of private asset based on cryptography and distributed ledger technology. While the European crypto asset is not very active, the EBA is concerned that there is a lack of regulation for crypto assets which currently falls outside the scope of EU financial services regulation. Moreover, the EBA stated that services related to crypto asset custodian wallet provision and trading platforms are not well accounted for when it comes to legal compliance. 
In turn, the EBA requested the European Commission to do a cost-benefit analysis of the proliferation of crypto assets and whether regulations are in fact necessary. Bringing the latest news to you, I'm your host Hun with the Token Post Daily News Briefing. Thanks for watching.